Natasha Koch here with the Van City Home Team. How's everybody doing? I'm in a different position now in my living room. I wanted to uh, do the May monthly market update as well as mortgage update. Now, those of you that have been staying tuned, you'll see that I have been doing a uh, mortgage and market update weekly, but this is the big one. Hopefully you can see my stats. I'm trying to adjust the lighting a little bit. Let me just move that down. I have to work on the, my lighting. Let's see if there's a glare. Anyway, I'm going to tell you what the stats are uh, for May. Let's go through them. So, uh, mind my artwork. But anyway, we uh, last year in May 2019, we had 2638, 2,638 sales. Uh, this May, we had 1,485 sales. So we're down 43.7% which is pretty actually pretty substantial. I'm gonna go through this in a minute because this is the sales to active ratio and I wanna kind of get a, uh, give a better explanation what a sales to active ratio actually is. So benchmark price in Metro Vancouver right now is 1,028,400. Uh, it's actually completely unchanged from April. So prices aren't changing. They're staying pretty constant and stable, but the big question is, are they gonna drop? Obviously with 1,485 sales, people are thinking so, otherwise they would be jumping on the bandwagon and buying stuff. So um, residential home sales down 43.7%. May sales were 54.4% below the 10 year span of May's. So, that's pretty slow for a May. Now, granted, I mean, we just came out of, well, we haven't quite come out of COVID uh, conditions. And typically the spring market is very, very busy for us. So we're kind of combining our summer and spring market all at once. So I, I anticipate based on uh, the amount of activity out there that that's gonna change. So stay tuned for my weekly update so that you can see what's actually happening weekly. <clears throat> okay. Sales to listing uh, activity. So new listings in total, in total total, including single family homes, condos, and townhouses, 3,684 in total. That's 37.1% less than last year. Uh, of course, now we're, uh, well, we have been deemed an essential service. So we have requirements as realtors where we need to have a uh, waiver signed for any showings. There are showings happening, not on all properties, uh, but those that are vacant especially and those that will allow showings, we have a, a waiver that you need to sign in order to show that you haven't traveled outside of the country. Uh, we're providing gloves and masks, or I am anyway, not all agents are. Um, and of course, our regular physical distancing requirements. Um, so we're doing our due diligence to do our business as safely as possible this world is getting crazier by the day. So let's talk about sale to active ratio. So I know that I have mentioned it before and I'm, I tend to be wordy and sometimes it gets a little confusing, but this is a really important number. Sales to active ratio is how many sales there has been compared to what is active. So I, I generally go through what's active every week and what's sold and now we're doing it for the month but we, our average sales to active ratio is 15%. So what does that mean? Analysts say that downward pressure on pricing occurs when the ratio drops below 12%. So right now we're at 15%. We haven't dropped below 12, which is why we don't see the prices adjusting downward. Upwards past 20 uh, means that the prices are gonna go up. So we definitely, if you follow my sales to active ratio over the months that I have been doing it, and if you would like a copy of it, I can give you the last three months, you will see that we are definitely on a downward uh, uh, direction as far as sales to active ratio, which would indicate that the prices are going to potentially come down if they drop below that 12%. So hopefully I explain that a little bit clearer. Um, I think I told you already, but if not, I'm going to repeat myself. Detached active listings currently, 3,949. Total sales, 534. Townhomes, 1,576. Sales, 298. 
condos, 4,402. Uh, which might sound like a really big number, but it's actually uh, low compared to last year at this time. Sales, 653. Days on the market average is between 35 and 45 days. These are my sales to active ratios. So although it's 15%, as I said, uh, single family is actually at 13.5%. Condos are at 14.8% and townhomes are at 18.9%. So the way that I would explain this to a client is single family is now becoming more of a buyer appealing market because they are getting closer to that 12% range. All right, so that is our monthly market update. After this live, uh, we're gonna play a little video of the mortgage update. There hasn't been uh, very much happening in mortgage land, but um, Jesse LaVoy with Dominion Lending is gonna explain a little bit about what is happening and some tips for you. I wanted to do sort of a fun thing. So every week I'm doing my market and mortgage update. So I came up with a trivia question and actually I'm gonna post the answer next Tuesday. So anybody that knows the answer to this question, please post it or private message me if you don't want people to see your answer. Which house is considered the oldest intact house in the lower mainland? I'll repeat the question. Which house is considered the oldest intact house in the Lower Mainland? I'll post the answer next week and I will private message you if you answer correctly in the meantime. I'm gonna give away a Starbucks gift card just for fun uh, and maybe I'll continue doing this if you guys like the contest idea. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, monthly market update. We'll see you on Thursday for our live. And next week, we're gonna do something different with the market update where we're gonna fine tune it to certain segments and areas. So New Westminster is gonna be next week so I can tell you all the different areas uh, each week. Okay, talk to you soon, bye. Jesse Lavoy here with Demi Lending Centers for your mortgage and market update. So today it's gonna to be a little bit different. I know normally I come on here and share a little bit of news with you um, and just keep you updated with what's going on in the industry, but news is slow today. So, um, you know, interest rates are steady, so there's nothing really to report there. So I thought instead I would chat with you about something that is coming across my desk often right now, and that is a co-signer and a guarantor. So right now we are in times, um, realistic Basically, we're you know we're in tough times and a lot of clients are asking what the process is like um, if they use a co-signer or a guarantor so I thought I would just explain the difference first and foremost between a co-signer and a guarantor so when you're qualifying for a mortgage you do have the ability to have someone on title with you which would be considered a co-signer so a co-signer is someone that would help you with qualifying we would take their full application use their income to help you qualify for whatever purchase that is is refinance um, you know even sometimes a renewal so a co-signer they're actually on title of the property now you can register that title however you like so for example if you wanted to be 99% owner they could be 1% but as a co-signer they would still be on the title a guarantor is a little a little bit different guarantor not as many institutions will allow a guarantor or accept a guarantor um, but some are so so that definitely is an option and your broker will of course point you in in the right direction and, and outline your options for you but a guarantor they are not on title of the property so a guarantor is essentially in the simplest terms vouching for you they're ensuring they are putting their name on the mortgage to ensure that if for some reason you don't make the payments they're liable and they're confident that you of course will be able Able to withhold those pay or, or continue making those payments um, if you guys have any questions of course you can always reach out to me and uh, I hope you all have a really great day